Getting used to hardcore Minecraft is a strange thing. The buildings you've made, the items you've crafted, the bosses you've defeated, all of it could vanish. The fear of losing your world, it never really goes away. You might have the best armor, the best weapons, but it's always there in the back of your mind. But you know what? I don't plan on losing it anytime soon. So here we are, day 401. I wanted to build a new verge or trading hall, but I didn't like the shape of the terrain. I also had no grass to fix it, so I'm beginning this video by gathering grass. I also needed slime to craft sticky pistons, so I paid a visit to the swamp where I found a witch hut. She managed to poison her own cat, so of course she had to die. I wasn't just going to abandon her cat though, I wanted to tame it and bring it home. Night fell and that meant it was time to gather slime. Day 402, I was determined to tame this cat. It took a while, but the moment arrived. Would it accept my offering of fish? Yes. Yes it would. In order to take my new friend home, I need to make the journey on foot, because pets have a very limited range that they can teleport. If I flew straight home with my elytra, it wouldn't teleport to me once I landed. After a few minutes I could see my base through the trees. I dyed the cat's collar blue to match his eyes and made him happy. I loaded up all of the grass I gathered earlier into a shulker because it's time to start terraforming. Well this doesn't look like terraforming. I had to spend some time lighting this area up because trying to build here with a bunch of mobs spawning definitely wouldn't be fun. This big area needs to be completely flat before I can start building the training hall. Hey man, can I have that dirt block? Ah, oh, cheers. I've run out of grass so the morning of day 403 was spent gathering more. I'm just warning you now that this won't be the first time this happens. For the rest of the day I continued smoothing out the terrain and by sunset I was done. I farmed my mares and pumpkins and then made a ton of money from my villagers. Day 404 I started laying the foundations for the hall. It's going to have a stone brick base with the hall itself made out of dark oak logs and spruce wood. I needed a lot of dark oak for this build so I had to head out to my usual forest to gather some. Now when I say gather some I mean I chop wood for the entire night. Day 405 I may have an arrow sticking out of my chest but trust me. I'm fine. As I was returning to my base, I spotted this verger house made of white terracotta. So what did I do? Steal the walls of his house. My rocket supply was running out, so I afk my creeper farm for the rest of the day. I guess I got karma for literally stealing someone's walls because this happened. I patched it up and moved on to building the hall. I continued building throughout the night using a mix of stripped spruce logs and spruce plank. Day 406 I used the materials I'd stolen from the verger house as a base for a clock. I built a small stairway up to the hall and it's looking alright. It's going to be a big project to get this thing fully built up and functional. I finished off the outline and filled in the floor. Can you just leave me alone? Day 407 I tried a 360 and killed the zombie but I just ended up getting set on fire. Not my proudest moment. Anyway, do you want to see something satisfying? I built all day and of course I ran out of materials. Day 408 some tourists showed up from my base. They didn't pay for parking though, so the punishment is death. I wanted to fight a raid, but I didn't want any of my virgins dying, so I returned to the virgin nearby. Honestly, this building still offers perfect protection. The battle went on all day, but at night things started going south. I still hate phantoms the most, but the Vex are a close second. There was an evoker nearby and he kept spamming them. It's pretty hard to fend off the other raid mobs when you've got angry demon babies flying around your head. I knew there was only one way to take control back. I dove into the crowd to take out the evoker. I took a fair bit of damage, but once he was down, the raid was so much easier. Sending that Vex flying was unbelievably satisfying. Now that I had Hero of the Verge, I could scam my virgins for an unbelievable amount of emeralds. Did I say scam? I meant trade. Day 409 the profits began. I traded paper, melons, wheat, anything the virgins would buy, I supplied. It kind of speaks for itself that I went from level 36 to 51 in the span of a single day. And now the best part, crafting emerald blocks. I've got a lot, but who doesn't love getting more? With the profits done, I returned to work on the new trading hall. Day 410 the hall is finally starting to take shape, although there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. The whole day was spent building, and at night I did the first bit of detailing. A wandering trader showed up with his usual list of absolutely incredible treasures and wouldn't stop doing that annoying noise as I worked on the hall. Mate, just shut up. Also, the usual pack of phantoms had to be dealt with. I almost never sleep in this hardcore world because of my limited time. 100 days is a lot, but I still don't want to waste any of it sleeping. Day 411, I like the way the hall is looking. It's missing a lot of things, including a roof and window panes, but it's getting there. I farm pumpkins and melons like usual and then headed out to the ocean monument I've been in 300 days. I wanted to build the roof of the trading hall out of prismarine, so I got to work taking apart this monument. This monument doesn't have any sponge rooms which gave me an idea. There was a monument super close by that I hadn't cleared so why not investigate it? By investigate I mean killing all three other guardians. Day 412 I surfaced from the monument. I'd seen several sponge rooms while exploring but I still had mining fatigue. I flew home, grabbed a bucket of milk and then returned. This monument definitely didn't disappoint when it came to sponge. It had an absolute ton of them. With the sponge and prism gathered up I headed home and began building the roof of the hall. Day 413 I wasn't sure if I really liked the blue roof. I decided to continue with it for a little longer in case that made a difference but by the end of the day I knew it wasn't right. I swapped out the prismarine for dark oak and it just looks so much better. Day 414 I needed more spruce 
wood. So you know what that means. Deforestation. Actually, it's not. I was environmentally friendly and grew my own trees. With all the extra wood, I was able to resume work on the roof, which I worked on all day and night. Day 415 is the same story. Building the roof during the day and building the roof during the night. By day 416, I made significant progress and to add some extra flair to the roof, I decided to add... I actually don't know what these are called, but these Viking curve things. I added detail to the clock and changed it up a bit. Day 417, I started work on the redstone side of things. It's about time I explain my master plan for this new hall. Stonemason vergers have two trades which are insanely useful. They exchange 20 stone for an emerald and 16 of either andesite, diorite or granite for an emerald. If I turn them into zombie vergers and kill them enough times, they'll happily exchange as a single block for an emerald. That's right, some of the most common blocks in the game for an emerald apiece. By day 418 I was done, but I had a problem. I need to place redstone behind the pistons, and in order to do that I need to place another block. The only issue was that there was no space because the windows were going to go here. It was going to be a massive pain because I just built it, but I need to move the entire system forward by one block. It took me all day and the night as well, but by the morning of day 419 everything was fixed. I made some money by selling pumpkins and melons to the prisoners and then continued building. This trading hall design is by Logical Geek Boy, I'll leave a link to it in the description. The hall was almost complete, but it was missing its chief employee. I need a zombie in order to infect the villagers. I say employee, but he doesn't get paid, so I'll call him a volunteer. I went to get a name tag for my willing volunteer in order to stop him from despawning, but he had already despawned when I returned. Luckily, I found a replacement, got him in, and named him. Day 420, it was time to visit somewhere I hadn't been in a long time. My old virgin breeder. I built a new one, but it's a long story, and I ended up taking it down. You two are going to be the ones to repopulate this land. Do you understand your task? Good. We'll leave that for a while and hope everything goes to plan. With that done, it was time to add detail to the hall. Day 421, I visited the breeder and... What? They hadn't even had a single child. I decided I'd put my virgin problems to the side for the time being because I wanted to add some windows poking out of the roof of the trading hall. I went through a few designs but eventually had something I liked. I checked back at the virgin breeder and was pleased to see they made a child. They told me their son was going to grow up and become a leather worker. That's great, but I don't care. He's going to be a stonemason paying one emerald per block of stone and he's going to love it. Over at the barn, things weren't going to plan. I killed a cow by accident and then this creeper blasted a hole in the field. I used the wool I gathered to add another row of beds to the breeder. This place looks empty now but Trust me, I'm going to have it overcrowded in no time. Day 422, I mirrored the roof window design onto the other side of the hall. After visiting the prisoners and selling a bunch of pumpkins and melons to them, I AFK my creeper farm for the rest of the day. I need a lot of rockets because I was going end raiding. I didn't have that many shulker boxes and the extra end city loot would be a bonus. I visited my enderman XP farm to get an ender pearl and also go through the end gateway and then somehow managed to do this. I also accidentally looked at a couple of endermen and they did some serious damage. After cranking my render distance all the way up, I set out in search of entities. For all of day 423, I not only looted every entity I found, but also annihilated all the inhabitants. Wait, that was kind of dark. Anyway, when I went back through the gateway, I added this barrier around my end spawn because it just felt unsafe. Once I was back home, I sorted out all the loot from the cities. Day 424, I think it's funny how you can go from flying through an alternate dimension one minute and then be farming pumpkins the next. Of course, I sold off all the produce to the local prisoners. I mean farmers, and look at how happy they are. I returned to the Dark Oak Forest because I wanted to gather enough wood to finish the detail in the trading hall. I hate these guys so much. Like, I genuinely hate them. I needed spruce wood so it was big tree time. I then began the final part of the trading hall. Day 425 was almost completely spent on decorating. It usually doesn't take me this long, but I had to go around the entire hall with scaffolding. It also took the whole night to finish. Day 426, the hall's still missing some window panes, but apart from that, it's finally complete. I checked up on the virgin breeder and the kids were all grown up, but stuck in the minecart tunnel. I gave these guys some more bread and they immediately got straight to doing their thing. I obviously wasn't going to stick around for that, so I left as quickly as possible. I grabbed some glass panes and changed the white stained glass of my windmills just regular glass. I then finished off the windows of the trading hall and it's complete. I love how this build turned out even though it took an absolute ton of wood to make. I headed out to get some flowers and on the way saw this enderman just churning in a tree. So I joined him. We had a great time but then he said he left the oven on and teleported away. I picked a bunch of flowers, blew up some flowers and then returned home. I applied the flowers in the window box of the trading hall and also added some lanterns to light it up. Day 427 the trading hall was missing a door so I added one. I also added these little gardens to either side. The breeder was finally seeing results. These kids are going to be great stuff. Masons. Don't tell them I said that though, they probably want to be astronauts or something. It was business as usual, farming the pumpkins and merds and then selling them. With that done, I started digging a tunnel to connect the new hall with the virgin breeder. Day 428, I completed the tunnel and started laying rails. I wanted to start moving virgins over, but it was turning to night and none of them would take up a job. I could have slept, but I didn't want to waste any time. I decided to build a fountain, but first it's time for everyone's favourite, placing grass. I got a small part of the fountain done and then saw that it was almost dawn, so I jumped in bed. That way, I could get rid of the fountains for a couple of nights and not use up any more time 
upon the necessary sleeping. Day 429 I was still working on the fountain but I didn't like how it turned out and ended up taking it all down. Now that it was daytime I could begin my army of stonemasons. I love how this hall works, the villager walks over to the job, falls in the hole and it closes after them. The entire day I rode the minecart track back and forth shuttling villagers over. It was pretty time consuming so I wasn't able to get that many. I brewed some weakness potions because there was about to be a few infections in the training hall. Not sure how I knew, I just had a feeling. Day 430, look at that, the villagers got infected. I have no idea how that happened but don't worry guys, I'll help you out. When I said I was going to get this place overcrowded, this is what I meant. It was another day of moving villagers over to the hall and infections that had absolutely nothing to do with me. At night I decided to give the fountain another go. This baby zombie villager attacked me and there was something about the way he died that made me feel bad. I don't even know why. Day 431, the fountain was finished and it looks so much better than my first attempt. I wanted to start trading with the new stonemasons and one of their first trades is clay. My netherite shovel has silk touch so I needed to use a different shovel in order to get the clay. After leveling up the stonemasons it was clear they needed some more persuasion. 14 stone for one emerald is alright but we can get much better. Guys calm down nothing's gonna happen. You're all zombies now. That's a shame. I finished off the day with some trading. Day 432 it was time to build a path up to the trading court. It wasn't the usual path that I've been building around my base I'm going for something grander. A nice paved road would really bring this area together. I was using a building tip I picked up recently. Instead of spamming the different blocks randomly, making small clusters of the different types makes a path blend together so much better. The stonemasons finished curing but it was only 8 stone per emerald so it's time for another round of voluntary discounts. I then peacefully built the path and also got set on fire but we don't talk about that. I was getting attacked by phantoms again and it was nearly daytime so I quickly rushed to bed. Day 433 I started adding these street lights along the road. I could have just placed torches but this way it looks a lot better. A thunderstorm kicked up and it was the perfect opportunity to gather some mob heads. Then a skeleton horse trap spawned, so I had to fight them off. I could have taken the skeleton horses home, but I already had one, so I didn't see the point. They can live out their happy skeleton lives doing whatever skeleton horses do. Anyway, once I arrived at a good flat area, I could begin getting the heads. Just in case you don't know how it works, a creeper struck by lightning will turn into a charge creeper, and mobs blown up by a charge creeper drop their heads. I was able to get a second zombie head, but then the thunderstorm ended and it just became regular old rain. Day 434, I was flying over my base when I noticed these two trade alarms fighting each other. This Lama not only killed his brethren, he literally tried to kill the wandering trader. I told him, hey, you stop that, that's not right, I have a better way. This llama clearly knew how to deal with wandering traders and I wanted to keep him. I'll think of a name for him later. I dug down because I was going to set up a mining beacon. Firstly because training with the stonemasons regularly would burn through a lot of stone and second because my resources were just non-existent at this point. I think I had about 20 iron ingots left and literally no redstone. Days 435 to 436 were spent carving out a massive amount of stone. I was pretty happy with all the ores that I got although 12 diamond ore felt a little bit low for the amount of mining that I did. I must have sold thousands of pumpkins and mounds at this point. And now for the best part of any mining trip stacking up all the ores and mining them with a fortune pickaxe. I got a ton of resting on lapis but only 23 diamonds from 12 ores with fortune through. Day 437 I head into the nether to gather quartz and I'll explain why in a minute. This bow shot was pretty good I'm not gonna lie. I also gathered up blackstone and you might be wondering why is he doing this? You'll find out soon. I also afk my gold farm for a bit which is completely unrelated I just wanted more gold because of all the golden apples I'd used curing the villagers. Day 438 I headed home and resupplied my golden apples. Now this is why I got all that quartz and blackstone. I had two of these beacon pedestals things around my base and wanted to build two more in order to form a square. First things first though, this beacon is actually misaligned. The distance from my first beacon to the tower entrance is 52 blocks but this one's something like 44. Yay, phantoms! By day 439 I had cleared enough space and done a bit of terraforming so I could start rebuilding the pedestal. By the end of the day it was complete and I moved the beacon over. Day 440 I was marking out where the other two beacons would go. Both of them are going to take some time to add in because the terrain's really uneven. I made stupid amounts of money trading with the stonemasons. Turns out if you get turned into a zombie enough time you think worthless rocks are very very valuable. The money making didn't stop at the stonemasons either, I just went straight over to the farmers and made even more money. I found this baby zombie trying to get into the hall and oh, whoops. In order to make space for a beacon and also because it looks ugly I need to completely clear this hill. One demolition project later and on day 441 there was no trace of the hill left. Want to know the best part? I then went and basically sold the hill to the stonemasons. Of course I did the usual trading with the farmers and crafted some more emerald blocks. I did some more terraforming and throughout the night built up the next beacon pedestal. I had a beacon just sat in my ender chest, so finally being able to put one to good use was a good feeling. Day 442, I headed into the nether to gather some warped wood because I needed some for the trapdoors on the beacon. When I returned, I found a wandering trader and I was genuinely going to let him live, but then I saw him and his llamas have my melon seeds and it was game over for this guy. Listen, I'm not having him crush a bunch of melon seeds. I added the trapdoors onto the beacon pedestal and then bought a bunch of name tags. In 400 days, I asked people to comment what they wanted me to name the cats in the market and here's a few of the names. We got Sebastian, we got Charlie, and we got, uh, his soaker. 
I experimented with some podzol for the path instead of spruce planks and I think I prefer it. However, I don't have that much podzol and this whole path needs to be remade to be honest. I came up with the design in the original 100 days and it definitely could be blended together a lot better. I started gathering a bunch of materials because it was time to take on one of the most tedious farms in Minecraft. It was time to build a wither skull farm. Day 443, I swear this happens every video I make but the audio is bugged and didn't record for a couple days. Not much happened anyway, I first went around shearing every sheep I could find because the wither skull farm I was going to build required a ton of carpet. I visited the turtles to gather up some turtle eggs. I stole in the walls of a house, now I stole the roofs of the market stores because they were made of wool. One day I'll probably just steal the entire village. Day 444 was also another fairly uneventful day, I spent the whole day AFK in the creeper farm for gunpowder. Night fell and thankfully the audio is back. I had all the materials I needed and headed through the nether to find a suitable fortress. I found a good one back in 400 days but I didn't screenshot the coordinates and I also don't have the footage on my PC anymore. So now I'm back to square one, blindly searching. I found a ruined portal with the worst loot I'd ever seen in my life and then I found a treasure bastion. The method of just sitting on a roof with a bow worked perfectly. I found this guy taking a lava bath for some reason and then accidentally took one myself. The loot was decent and I made sure to grab the gold blocks on the back. Day 445 I used one of the best features that Optifine has which is being able to turn off the nether fog. I don't know about you but I think the nether looks so much cooler without the fog. I found yet another bastion and the loot was really average. Yeah, it was just average. My search for a fortress was finally rewarded with this one. It's definitely not perfect, but it's usable for sure. The ideal fortress is one that's in a lava lake as much as possible, with any nearby biomes being soul sand valleys. I need to swarm proof the entire fortress for the farm to work, and looking at the amount of slabs I brought is honestly hilarious. This wasn't even a quarter of the amount of slabs I would need. Days 445 to 446 are exactly what you'd expect, placing slabs with the sinking realization that I was running out very quickly. Day 447, I'd already run out of slabs and returned to the overworld to gather more. I wasn't too worried because I kept a shulker box in my ender chest with the supplies to build a max beacon. Or at least I usually did, but I must have used some of the emerald blocks back at the base or something. So that means no haste too, which means no instant mining, which means I'm going to have to spend a lot of time slowly collecting thousands of stone blocks. The whole day and night, all I saw and heard was stone breaking. I went back to nether on day 448 to start placing slabs again. The wither skull farm itself takes around half an hour to build, maybe even less if you're experienced with it. Spawn proofing an entire nether fortress though, it takes hours. Day Day 449 was the exact same thing, slab after slab. Day 450 was in the menu, slabs. Yeah, this restaurant sucks. I ran out again and as I was heading back to my portal, I found these pigs on holiday. I'm not going to be surprised if they get turned into bacon by the time the farm's finished. My pickaxe and elytra needed repairing and I spotted a version of bias so I stole all their food and sold it back to them. It's a simple spell, but quite unbreakable. Day 451 could be summed up in one word, pain. If I just left the emerald blocks in my ender chest as they were, I'd have gathered up all the stone I needed in 10 minutes flat. But you're watching Mosey, not Mumbo Jumbo, I have a total of about 5 brain cells. Day 452, it was back to Slapland. I pushed this zombie piglin off the edge and at the time thought it was really funny, I think I was going slightly insane after placing so many slaps. But finally, on day 453, it was done. Every single block of the nether fortress was spawn proof. I could finally start building the farm. It's another design from Logical Geek Boy, I'll leave a link in the description. These turret legs behind trap doors lure any blazes and zombie piglins to spawn into the cactus trap because otherwise they would just sit around the farm and take out the mob cap. Day 454, I was building this chute for the wither skeletons to fall down where I can safely fish them off with my sword. I needed to pick them for the farm to work, but I didn't have a name tag to stop him from despawning, so I headed onto the nether roof to go home. I had enough obsidian to make another portal, so all I had to do was fly to 0, zero and I'd pretty much be back at my base. It took way less time than I expected, and in no time, there I was, back at home. As I edit this video, I really want to know why I didn't just do this when I didn't have enough emerald blocks for a full beacon. I could have fixed the problem in less than 10 minutes and saved myself all that time mining stone. Day 455, I did some trading as usual, got myself a name tag and also some more carpet. With that out of the way, I returned to the fortress and the pigs were still alive. How? There's literally fire everywhere. I got this piglin to chase me all the way to the farm and then trapped him. Have fun standing still forever. I placed down the carpet in a specific way in order to stop magma cubes from spawning, although I still didn't have enough. Day 456, I was testing the completed wither skull farm and wasn't getting any wither skeletons. I went to check on it and then this happened, which wasn't really what I had in mind. I was starting to lose hope to be honest. After hours of work, was it all for nothing? Then I saw a comment on the tutorial saying to try turning the render distance as low as it would go. And then the skeleton started pouring in. It slowed down after a while and I checked up top. I probably should have replaced those carpets. So that was exactly what I did. I ran around shearing every sheep I could find. Your wall's mine, your wall's mine, and yours and yours and yours. Day 457, after shearing every sheep in a 20 mile radius, I repaired the farm and spent a while grinding. I stayed there until I got 9 skulls, which didn't even take that long. After that, it was time to head home. Day 458, I arrived home and immediately went to bed IRL because it was 4 in the morning. I have a terrible sleeping schedule. Now that I'm awake again, let's continue. The whole day was spent just sorting out all the leftover stuff from the wither skeleton farm and random bits 
bits and pieces. Are you really surprised at what I did after? At night I added these paving stone things to the road using some polished andesite and some stairs but I wasn't sure if I liked them. Day 459 it was time to finally get the answer to a question I'd had for a long time. Could I take on two withers at once? Mate listen if you don't leave you're gonna die. I did warn him. Not the worst wither fights in the world but I did forget swiftness potions which was a massive pain. I decided to keep the polished andesite in the road but remove the stairs. Now that I had more beacons I could add a fourth pedestal to my base. In order to do that though I had to terraform this area and on day 460 I did the classic thing where I placed grass for about 5 minutes and run out. Honestly how do I even say anything entertaining about this It's literally just a day of placing grass. Day 461 I'm doing something more interesting. I lied, I'm placing more grass. But I finally got it done and could start building. Day 462, the beacon square was finally complete and it's so satisfying to finally have it done. Also, I actually made sure my beacon shulker had enough for a max beacon. I never want to have to mine stone with haste 1 for a solid hour ever again. Talking of stone, these stone masons had increased the price to 3 stone for an emerald. I'm the one that's supposed to be doing the scamming. I need to brew more weakness potions which gave me an idea. Why not have an automatic potion brewer? I used these sumo voids design from 7 years ago but it still holds up today. I built 3 of them. One is going to be for weakness, one for strength and one for swiftness. I began day 463 by setting up a temporary patch in nether wall. Of course I wasn't just going to leave the auto potion brew as it was, it needed to be decorated. I decided to make a small store made with some dark oak, stone and stone brick. Day 464 I was adding the roof and building a little extra part on top of the store where the owner would live. Day 465 is definitely making progress. I also did some really interesting stuff like having the game paused because I was making instant noodles. Day 466 I was adding the seating area to the store when a thunderstorm began. It was time to to collect more heads. Ah, there's children everywhere. I do kind of look like a porcupine, but I'm fine. By the end of the day, I had two zombie heads, two skeleton heads, and a creeper head. I had no idea what to do with them, so I just put them in the corridor leading to the throne room. I decided to check on the Virgil Breeder. What have I done? That wasn't me, I had nothing to do with this, and now I'm gonna leave. Day 467, I built some more of the road and added some more streetlights. I also sold the stone masons a bunch of worthless rocks, and they gave me a bunch of valuable rocks. I started gathering materials for an auto pumpkin farm. Day 468, I had to gather more grass, because the place where I wanted to build the pumpkin farm looked like a bomb site. A gang of pages showed up because they wanted some grass and I said no, get your own grass. Now that I had bad omen it was time to start a raid but while searching for a village I found this witch hut. It had a black cat in it which is my favourite type so of course I had to tame it. What you're about to see is the most annoying night of minecraft I've ever had. I needed fish in order to tame the cat so I killed some and then returned. Imagine trying to chase a black cat through a dark forest while mobs are constantly trying to kill you. For some reason the cat wouldn't approach me even though I had fish. It was an extremely long and frustrating night. Then I realised that I'm a massive idiot and those fish I gathered were cooked fish so of course the cat didn't want them. I had no clue why fire aspect works underwater because that literally makes zero sense but regardless I just needed to get some raw fish. Day 469 I got the fish with a trident instead of my sword and I could finally tame the cat. As you can see I was pretty happy. I had a raid to do though so I sat him down and promised to come back for him. I found a ruined portal during my search for a village and got some free gold blocks. Hey guys, you're all gonna die. And I nearly died as well, but we'll get onto that in a minute. The first few waves this raid were hilariously easy. The purges kept spawning on the other side of this river and they just stand there as I killed them all with my bow. Then night fell and things got bad. Really, really bad. I was on top of this house surrounded by every single raider. There were several evokers that kept spawning the vex and I started taking a ton of damage. In also escape, I put on my elytra and got absolutely demolished by the vex. If I had taken even one more second here, I would have died. Of course, after being a literal second away from death, my heart rate was through the roof. I know it's a pretty cliche thing to say, but it was genuinely pounding. After clearing the raid, I found myself a new friend and we spent the night fighting monsters together. Day 4 just 70, I headed back home with my new wolf. It was the same story with the cat from Earth. Earlier, I couldn't go out too far or he wouldn't teleport so I had to keep stopping to let him catch up. I know I said I'd go and get the cat as well and I will but I couldn't quite remember where he was so I decided to do it a little later. Once I was back home I cashed in on my Hero of the Village status and made a mountain of emeralds. Day 471 was the same story. Many many emeralds were scammed. Traded. I went and retrieved my cat and rode us home. Why are you in there? He stopped teleporting for some reason, so day 472 I had to use a lead. I had to do some more terraforming but finally got it done and could start building the pumpkin farm. It's only going to be a pumpkin farm, not a pumpkin and melon farm because my melon field is way bigger than my pumpkin one. Day 473 I was building the farm when a wandering trader started wandering around. I was going to let him live but then he made that stupid noise one too many times and I did what needed to be done. With the collection system done I could move on to the actual pumpkin farm. I don't know how to pronounce the name of the guy that made this farm but his tutorials linked down below in the description. By day 474 I was done, but of course, like the potion brewer, it needed decorating. I honestly had no clue how to make this thing look good, so I just started building around it to see if I'd get any ideas. Then I got one. I was going to turn this place into a mini castle, but what would be really cool was if I could add an auto sugarcane farm in the center. All of day 475 I was adding the first layer of the sugarcane farm. Day 476 I was still going and then this happened. 
I think I died inside at this point. I had just washed away every single pumpkin stalk in the farm. I replied them all and it was really annoying. We're going to skip ahead to day 478 because all I did was add more layers to the sugarcane farm. Now that the farm itself was done, I could add the small castle on top. I've been watching Gemini Taste Hardcore Let's Play and really liked the design of her castle, so I decided to build something similar. Day 479, I built the roof of the first tower and I think it looks pretty good. I added a roof to the second tower and also detailed the underneath. Just leave me alone for two minutes. Day 480, I got all four rooms of the towers done and started making the central building. I chopped down a big spruce tree to get more wood and chopped down a lot of dark oak trees. Go away! Day 481, I'm still building and someone in the comments suggested last video that I tell a funny story, so here you go. Do you know anyone that sleeps? to school because I used to be a godly school sleeper. Me and my friends used to hang out in a small corridor that led to a fire exit and the teacher would of course never come down it. This meant I could sleep in literally all my study periods without getting found out. I'd come to school and whenever I had a study period I'd just take a nap in the corridor. I even started bringing in a spare hoodie which I would use as a pillow. Enough about all the extra sleep I got at school though because I pretty much finished the main area. Day 482 I'm really proud of how this castle turned out being able to mix in farms with decoration. I made some money because I hadn't done that in a few days and went on a little naming spree. We have Atachi the wolf, Gengar the cat, and I was going to name the llama that tried to kill the wandering trader, but I think he despawned. I needed someone to take his place, so I dyed this sheep cyan and gave him the name instead. There wasn't a shred of intelligence behind his eyes, but he'll figure things out. I put some windows in the castle and then put some arrows in these fans. I also added some detail to the side with this stone wall design and finished the detail on the rest of the towers. Day 483, the castle was almost complete. The final thing to do was some interior design, but I decided that could wait till later. I wanted a cartographer because for day 500, I wanted to take on a woodland mansion and cartographer sell woodland explorer maps. I reconnected the minecart system to my first training hall and sent this villager over. He immediately ran away and I don't blame him. I got my next willing volunteer but it was nice, so he didn't want a job. He's getting one anyway. After giving him the usual treatment I had some time to kill so while I waited for him to cure I started work on the interior of the castle. It's pretty nice in here. There's a four poster bed, some bookshelves, a carpet and a nice zombie head which I named Fred. The slabs on most of the towers were out of place so I spent the whole night fixing them. Day 485 the cartographer cured and I bought the map that I needed. I also bought a bunch of regular maps because I wanted to make a huge map of my base. At the end of the day, I pieced all the maps together in the trading hall. These stone masons were getting way ahead of themselves. Four stone for an emerald? Unacceptable. Day 486, I set up a beacon and started mining. I wasn't interested in diamonds or anything like that, I wanted stone. If everything had gone to plan, the stone masons would now buy one stone for one emerald, so I wanted a huge supply that I could sell off every day. I mined until my pickaxe was almost done for and then checked the stone masons. And these fools had exactly what I wanted. You get some stone. And you get some stone. Stone. Everybody gets a uh, worthless stone. At night I found myself a new cat and I actually used raw fish this time. Day 487 and had about 4 hours of sleep and as a result I tried to go down my bubble elevator. Every single one of my pets just stared at me, judging. After that I started building a wall around this area and I think it looks decent. Day 488 I'm selling the prisoners more rocks. Did I say prisoners? I don't think I did. The moral of the story is, well there's no moral, but there's a lot of emerald blocks. I swear I've said the words melons and pumpkins way too many times in this video. At night I was adding the stone path to this area because in the future I want this place to be like some kind of courtyard. Day 488 I was doing the same thing. I also added some barrels to the castle for a bit of extra detail. Then I realised. How could I let the Emperor of the Underworld live with the other sheep? He needs someone to go, so now he has his own area where he can do what Empress of the Underworld do, I guess. I started work building a new house. It's purely for decoration, because at some point I want to build an entire medieval village. The next three days are just me building the house, and then demolishing the entire thing because I didn't like how it looked. For someone who goes on about not wasting time, I definitely waste a lot here. Day 493, I'm not wasting time because I've finally got a decent house design. I was going to go with a Tudor style, using this diorite for the top half. Day 494, I was making good progress and gave this place a nice chimney. I made good progress on the interior but I'm going to start the hunt for the woodland mansion on day 495 so I'd have to leave this place unfinished. Day 495 it was time to begin. I fixed up my bow, jumped in the nether and started flying. I was about 13k blocks out and I realized I'd been going in the wrong direction. Thanks to the nether it only took me a few minutes to get back to where I started. Now it's time to start searching for the mansion. Day 496 I found this bastion and I couldn't resist the temptation to raid it. It had a pickup disc but apart from that nothing of any interest. After going 30,000 blocks out I had finally closed in on the mansion. Now all I had to do was fly in the right direction and my five brain cells actually all worked together. Now what else would a friendly visitor do except break a window and kill three of the inhabitants? The mansion was crawling with enemies and I took a fair bit of damage fighting them. The last time I've been in one of these was probably around five years ago when I used to play on the Xbox 360 version and there only ever used to be one evoker. This mansion had way more than one. For the amount of effort you have to go to finding the mansion and considering how strong the enemies are the loot is just really really bad. I 
I found myself a golden apple and a couple of anvils, but apart from that, there was nothing. I did also check behind the Vindicator face made of wool, because science has a secret room, but in this mansion there wasn't. Day 497, I left the mansion. I thought it would take me a lot longer to find, but actually it took me around half an hour. This also happened while I was in the nether, and I didn't bother eating any golden apples, because I had spare totems from the mansion. I just let my totem activate and equipped a new one. I had something even better planned for day 500, but I'll keep that a secret. For now, I was just decorating the interior of the new building, which I decided was going to be a guild. Day 498, I named my new cat Sienna and she's going to be the leader of the guild. She even has her own throne. I made a little sign with some iron swords and also added some sweet berry bushes for decoration. Day 499, I realized I still had three wither skulls left and decided to fight a wither. I had to spend a fair bit of time looking for a good place to spawn it because I'd wrecked most of the nearby land already. When you remember to bring a swiftness potion, the fight's pretty easy. When I got home, I did the final bit of trading for day 500. Day 500, notice anything different? For the last day, I'm going to be giving a tour around my base. I did one last video, but it lasts about 30 seconds, so hopefully this one's more interesting. As I wandered along the winding roads of my base, my mind flashed back to all the times I nearly died in this world. But here I was, on day 500 of Hardcore Minecraft. That's gonna be it for the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. I've been working on this video for weeks, so if you could drop a like, maybe even subscribe, it would mean a lot. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see 600 days, I'll get straight to making it. I've also made a Discord server where I'm gonna be hanging out with you guys, so if you want to join, the link's in the description and pinned in the comments. See you in the next video, peace.